Tessim and Aleph. Mishlei Chag, the Yom Tov Rishon Shal Chag. Someone that didn't bring his carbon Chagiga when he was supposed to, which was the first day of the holiday. Well, what does he do? Chagiga Skol Regal, the Yom Tov Rishon Shal Chag. It's not a problem. He can make it up by bringing it any other day of the holiday. And not only that, but he can even bring it on Yom Tov Achran. He can even bring it on the last day. The last day is referring to Shemini Atzeres, which is really a different holiday. But nevertheless, although it's a different holiday, but it's still a Tashlumen for Sukkot. Very interesting. Let's say he missed that as well. He missed the whole holiday. So Enechayev Bacharyusei is not responsible anymore. What does that mean? Alzanema, regarding this, it says, something crooked that cannot be straightened, and something lacking that can't be counted. He missed his chance. Yeah. Remember that Yiddish song, uh, of Remel and Malamed? You may hear that song? It's about this Malamed that he messed up everything he did. On Pesach, they found the kernel of wheat in the Knadel, and on Rosh Hashanah, he went to the mikveh and missed the Tkiya Shefer. Everything was just, uh, <laughs> anyway, this poor fellow goes to Yerushalayim, but he doesn't uh, bring his carbon and he missed it. So it says it's too late, he can't make it up. Rabshimen ben Menasi Aymer, Ezel Mova Shen Yechuliskin. Rabshimen ben Menasi says, What's something crooked that can't be straightened? Zehabal Erva Vahilin Menem Mamser. This is someone that lives with someone that's forbidden to him, with a woman that's forbidden to him, and gives birth to a Mamser. To a, a, a illegitimate uh, child can can never be fixed. That's the idea. It can never be fixed. The, the, the child is in the world. In Taimar began. Yeah. Which one? No. Yeah. Um, it's, there's a, a word missing. A missing word there. La Sin is always remembered. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. What does Zachar and, and Zechar have to? What's the connection? Nail and, uh, and remembrance. What's the connection? I don't know. In a Hebrew word for a, ma- a male, a boy, is a Zachar. And it's also, it has the same letters as to remember. Yeah. <clears throat> what's the connection? I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah, someone told me that women, they don't really uh, remember things. They're reliving it every moment. <laughs> if you ever did anything wrong, they, it's not like, ah, oh, you remember, you're still doing it. <laughs> so maybe that's the shot. I remember, male is, I remember. Okay, so <clears throat> maybe you say the same thing applies to someone that steals. The going of a geisel. It says it's not so because yachalu lachzir v'yasak, now you can always return. Type of mistake that could be fixed. Rab Shimon ben Yechayimer, Shimon ben Yechay says, "Ain kairin mo'avisal mishayim esukin betchila." What could be crooked? Only thing that could be crooked is something that was originally straight and it was became crooked. So it must be v'nesavis, and then it became crooked. Ve'eze, what type of person, what type of event would be straight and then turned crooked? Zeh talmud chacham aperish It has to be a Torah sage that he then leaves the Torah, that he becomes crooked. Otherwise, it's not nothing to do with being crooked. It was always like that. Okay. <clears throat> What's the pshad? He can't go back, according to Rav Shimon ben Yechai. Maybe the pshad is he can't make up the lost time, maybe. I don't know what the pshad is. See, the other ones are very clear. I mean, he can't make it up. But according to Rabshim Ben Yechai, he's talking about a Torah sage that leaves the Torah. Oh, you can never fix it. Why not? Let him come back to the yeshiva and, uh, and study. Must be that you can't make up time. That must be. So maybe they. Uh, oh, but then that would have been the first chat. Then that would have been the first chat. Maybe it means he passes away. Before he's able to go back, but then any anything, uh, even stealing, if he passed away before he returns, it would be the same. No, Mishnah says 
that you can bring uh, carbon schlumming after if you miss the first day. Yeah. But didn't it just say like right before it says that's if you miss the person. whole if you hold, miss the whole holiday, then you missed everything. If you miss the first you day, could, you can you make could, it up. You could give a car you have to give three carbonium a year. Every cycle you have to give three. Yeah. So you could give uh carbon schlumming even before Sukkot. That's yeah, like no, but really this is a special, that. you're right, but this is a special holiday. Shlam, it's called the Chagiga. Mm. It's brought only on the holiday. If someone doesn't oh, bring see, it, see. he misses that mitzvah of the Chagresim, I say, that he's supposed to celebrate with the Shlamim on the holiday. <clears throat> so you have a little bit of time to make it up, but uh, if you miss it, don't miss it. Again. Right, 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 right. Gemara asks on the first uh, statement that we said that you have the whole holiday to make it up. And not only that, but you even have Shemini Atzeres Atzer to make it up, right? So Shemini Atzeres is officially a different holiday. So how does that work? Minohani Mili, where do you know that you can make up the, the missed sacrifice on the first days of Sukkot, even on Shemini Atzeres? Amar Rabbi Yechanan Mishim Rabbi Shmal. Rabbi Yechanan says in the name of Rabbi Shmal, Nemar Atzeres B'Shvi Shal Pesach, Nemar Atzeres B'Shmini Shal Chag. The same word. Atzeres, which the Gemara will translate in a moment to mean that you should not do work. Stop. Atzer means to stop from doing work. Um, so it says that word. I'm telling a, a, an interesting chat back on, um, on Rav Shem Meichai, that it's only someone that was first learned and then left that that's a problem. Maybe the diak would be that someone that never studied does not have the same um, negative uh, uh, connotation. He never studied. I mean, that's, that's, that is what he's saying. The question is, when you then look at it on, on the... Um, of what he actually did, he did study and he did leave, so let him come back as well. Okay, <clears throat> so it says atzeres by Shvi Shal Pesach and it says atzeres by Shmini Shal Chag. Shmini Shal Chag means Shmini Atzeres. That's that's where the name really is. So um, Shvi Shal Pesach. What does the pasuk say? It says Sheishis Yam Em Teichel Matzis. Six days you should eat matzos. I'm I'm quoting the pasuk. It's not in the text. Rashi quotes it. Ubayim Shvi Atzeres. Mm. And on the seventh day, it's at Ceres. <coughs> it actually says, at Ceres, that's the full passage. The eighth day is the answer. Yeah, but on, on Pesach, it also says the word at Ceres for the seventh day. All right, well, yeah. Figure out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then, and then for the eighth day, and then for Sukkot, it's on, it says at Ceres for the eighth day. The Gemara says like this. Easy. Just like you have the all seven days of Pesach to make up the carbon Chagiga, so too you have all eight days of Sukkot to make up the carbon Chagiga. You get an extra day in there. Because why? Because it says Atzeres, and we compare it to Pesach. The Atzeres wow. of Pesach works, so too the Atzeres of Sukkot should also work, even though it's a day later and it's a different holiday. The Gemara says... Mufna. Mufna means that the word is extra. Yeah. When you use a gzera shava, I find the word in this context, and then I find it in another context. And I say, because in this context, it means such and such. So to another context, it means such and such. It's a gzera shava, a verbal analogy. There's different ways of going about this, but one of them is that if it's mufna, if the word is extra, then even if I have a question on it, it's still a good lima. But if the word isn't extra, then a question on it would knock it off. I need the word anyway. And besides, the comparison isn't perfect. But if it's extra, then even the comparison isn't perfect, I can still use it. So Gemar says it must be extra because the comparison isn't perfect. The ilav mufne, if it wasn't an extra word, I have a very good question that messes up the comparison. The seven days of Pesach, the seventh day is no different is no different than the six days before. It's the same holiday. 
Taimer b'shmini shel chag shechalik mel shmishalafana. Say about the shmini atzeres, which is different than the days before. That's a very strong question. You made a comparison, which is not the same. You're trying to get a halacha out of this. It's not. It's not accurate. Unless you say that the word atzeres is extra. The word atzeres is extra would teach it to me. Yeah. 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 We also don't say Shafiano uh, because it's considered the same holiday. Right? It's considered all the same holiday. Oh, this, the, the um, only say whole halal on the first day is of Pesach. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It, Isn't there somewhere that refers to Shavuos also as a Tzeres? Yeah. That yeah. connects it back together to Pesach? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're making it complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Gemara didn't do that. Yeah, and when I first was reading this, I was like, oh no, I can make up on, on Atzeres, on Shavuos for the missed Karban on, on Pesach. Then I saw it's not what the Gemara means. The Gemara means the seventh day is the, yeah, yeah. It's only a comparison from those two Atzeres. Oh, a gzera shava. Gzera shava. In English, it's called a verbal analogy. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good translation, but that's what they call it. Okay. So it says that it's an extra word. The Gemara now says, by the way, I should mention that how is Shemini Atzera separated? Then the first six day, the first seven days has six differences. And it's an acronym in Masech the Sukkot that discusses Pazer Kashev. Has different amount of animals, sacrifices, has its own car, uh, its own specific carbon, its own shachiano, its own pius, its own, uh, its own. Uh, they they start over the cycle of which kayanim are going to go, even though the whole sukkah so it had a certain system to it. So it really starts over. It's really its own holiday in six different ways. Uh-huh. So if I don't have the extra word, I would say that the comparison is not good. The Gemara says le'iye. You when you want to know something, le'iye means bemis. Yeah, I think there was actually, you know, sometimes by um, um, when someone says a bracha, they say l'chaim. Is there such a thing by uh, Baruch Hashem? They say l'chaim. Is that what the Sfardim do that? When do they say l'chaim? They, they do that, and savri, savri marnan. Oh, savri marnan, they do lachaim. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Some there is a source that was actually originally supposed to be lachaye <laughs> or laaye, lachaye or laaye, and that means emes, emet. What I heard was that the source for us saying lachaim uh, and savri marnan was from the and sheikh knesset Gdola when they did exardin and they right. raised the cup. And right. using the cup that it was it was supposed to be for the vote whether it's a chaim or mavet. Here we absolutely confirm that it's because it's a, the kadosh shabbos is absolutely chaim. Yeah. yeah, there's a medrash that says that they would have someone drink wine, so they say this wine is not like that wine. Someone that was being uh, punished. Um, yeah, so it doesn't fit with the medrash, but I did see this shot in a in a sefer that it w- that there was a source to say laaye or lechaye, and then. It's also, anyway, either way, la'aye means be'emes. The truth is, you're right. Afnu'i mufna, yeah? It is an extra word. Why is it extra? Michti, let's see. My atzeres, what does the word atzeres mean? Atzer basiyas malacha. It means stop from doing work. Paksiv le'sasa malacha. It already says, actually, in the Pasuk, it says, it says, be'yem ashvi atzeres. On the seventh day, don't do work, you know, because it's yeah, all in the middle. Sorry, 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 and then it continues. At Saras Lashem Alekafa. And then the Pasuk concludes, Laysasa Malacha, don't do work. One second, you just said don't do work. You said Atzeres, that means don't do work. Right. So it must mean that Atzeres is extra because you said you spelled it out later. You said don't do work. So Atzeres the Khasar Rahman Alamali. Why does it have to say the word Atzeres? El Ashmami Nalafnu is coming to tell me an extra word, which is coming to teach me Xer Shava over to Shmini Atzeres, that you can also make it up on Shmini Atzeres. The carbon chagiga. 
Okay, that was all from Rabbi Yechanan. We have actually another source for the same halacha, but from a brisa. The Tani was taught in a brisa. The pasuk says, That means you'll celebrate it, a holiday for Hashem, seven days. The pasuk continues. I'm quoting. It's not in the in the text of the Gemara. It says, It's an everlasting statute. Uh, on the in in the seventh month you celebrate it okay so the pasuk actually starts with and it concludes with in the seventh month again it like goes back and repeats the beginning of the sentence just raise the seventh month this is the seventh month yeah what do you call that in in uh, in, um, in um poetry when you have a, B, C, B, A. What is that called? There's, you know, like you end oh, off, yeah, you yeah. end off with the way you start. But right. there's a word for that. Um, I don't know. Iambic. I thought it was something else. I thought there was rhyming, another word. Like you rhyme the last Ca- word. Cast. It's something castic or something. Is it castic? Kiast. What is kiastic? Is that a word? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I learned it from a commentary on Tanakh. And they write these Hebrew words in English and, and, and they spell it out in Hebrew letters. And then I have to look them up in English to see what that what it really means. Because the Hebrew language borrows from English to mm-hmm. they don't have it's not a Hebrew word. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have another source. The Pasuk says, you celebrate. A holiday for Hashem, seven days. Maybe you should bring another sacrifice every single day. It says you celebrate for seven days. says, no, 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 no. Only one day. Isai is a singular. Celebrate it. Just one day. Ah, Maisha. Isai at the kol shiva. You only celebrate it, you don't celebrate all seven days. You only celebrate once. In Kain Lama Nemar Shiva. So why do you say seven? Ah, that's the Tashlumen. That's to tell me that if you missed it, you can make it up. Okay. How do you know that not only you can make it up on the seven days, but you can even make it up on Shmini Atzeres? It only says seven. Shiva How do you get the eighth one in there? Listen to what it says. In the seventh month, you celebrate it. Talking about bringing the carbon chagiga as a as a tashlumen, as a makeup, even on the eighth day. How do you know that? Because it says the seventh month. Then maybe you can make it up the entire month because that's what the word means. The the seventh month. No, only it. You only celebrate the holiday not after the holiday. Okay, so that extra tachaygu aisai tells me that I can add in one more day to be able to do tashlumen. So we have two sources. I have Rabbi Yochanan in the name of Rabbi Shmuel source from the word atzeres, and I have another source from the two expressions tachaygu aisai um, in that pasuk that tell me that I can make it up an extra day. <clears throat> okay, Aztec? How do you know you looked it up? Uh, is that what it is? A, B, C, A, B, A? Can I ask them? Because I'm saying the Pasuk starts off with So the beginning of the verse and the end of the verse is the same. Uh, so it starts off and, and then it has something else in the middle and then it ends off with the same thing. <laughs> okay. What does it mean? 
how do you do the Teslam? How does this work? We had this Gemara before, so this is going to be repetitive. We had it Mamash on the first stuff. It says like this. Rabbi Yechanan Amr Teslam and Rishon. Yechanan says that the later days make up for the first day. Rabbi Yishia Amr Teslam and Zelazeh. Rabbi Yishia says that each day makes up for the previous day. Now, what that means is that if someone wasn't able to do it on the first day, so he's able to do it on the second day. And if he didn't do it on the second day, the day, the day after makes up for it. Okay, so what's the difference between the two? Rabbi Yechanan also said that the later days make up for the first day. The only difference is, my binaya, what's the difference? I'm Rabbi Yechanan said that the other days make up for the first day specifically. Not that each day makes up for the, for the day prior. And which means that if the person was not obligated on the first day because he was a chiger, he was lame on the first day, he didn't have to go to the base of Migdash, he was exempt, then even if he's healed on the second day, but he doesn't have to make it up. I, but the second day is an obligation, and the third day is not according to Rabbi Yechanan. According to Rabbi Yechanan, the second day is only a tashlumen. It's only a makeup for the first day. And if he was exempt on the first day, then he's already exempt. Yeah. Let's say like grandfathered in is like a, an expression. It's like uh, you're already exempt. You don't have any new obligations anymore. And Rabbi Shia says, no, every day is a new, uh, is a new obligation. So, Afagav lechazi berishon, chazi b'sheni. Rabbi Shem Tershim says, Afagav lechazi berishon. I skipped something over here. Rabbi, let's go back. Rabbi Yechonam and Tashlum and Rishon. Rabbi Yechonam says, uh, make up for the first day. Kivan the Lechazi Rishon, Lechazi B'Sheni. If he wasn't fit, suitable on the first day to bring it, so he doesn't have to bring it on the second day because the second day is just to make up for the first. Rabbi Yechonam and Tashlum and Zelazeh. It's each day makes up for the previous day. Alpha Gav Lechazi Rishon, Lechazi B'Sheni. Even though uh, he wasn't suitable, it wasn't fit to bring it on the first day, but nevertheless, on the second day, he was. And so the second day has its own obligation. The Gemara asks, so, hachi. does Rabbi Yechanan really say that only if you are obligated on the first day will you have to make it up? We have a slight problem. The comparison is not perfect, but we'll see. It's enough to ask the question. It says, Va'amr we have a statement like this. Nitma biyayim mevi. We're talking over here about a Nazar. A Nazar that becomes Tame. A, a Nazar is someone that takes a vow. He's not going to cut his hair. He's not going to drink wine. You know, he's not allowed to become Tame. If he does become Tame, then he has to start over. So not only does he start over, but he has to bring sacrifices as well. I thought that was so, just when he like, violates yeah. the qualifications of being a Nazar. Yeah. Wine and all this. Yeah. Or, or, know, here, if, or if he becomes Tame. Oh. So if he becomes Tameh, he has to start over. He has to bring Kabanas. The question is, let's say he became Tameh, and he counts the right amount of days to, 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 to become purified and bring his carbon. He counts seven days. And then that evening, before he brings his carbon on the eighth day, he becomes Tameh again. Is that considered a new Tameh? Or is that all part of his old Tameh, and he only has to bring one sacrifice? Or do we say he has to bring two, sacrifice, two sacrifices because wow. he's already... Pure, been purified from his old one, he just didn't bring the sacrifice yet. Or because it's before the sacrifice, do we say that it all gets included in all that one sacrifice? So the case was Nitma Bayoim, if he becomes Tameh on the eighth day, then everyone says maybe he has to bring a new karman. Not only the, for the old Tameh, but he became Tameh again, he has to bring two. We studied this suya a few months ago, can't remember. Yeah. We definitely had it We're talking about because the Yomtara say that it's quoted. Yeah, it's quoted in Psachim. Yeah, that. Yeah. It's quoted in Psachim. So <clears throat> Rabbi Yechanan says, Af Balayla Nami Mevi. Rabbi Yechanan says that even if he becomes tummy again at night, he still has to bring a second carbon. And what we're seeing is that even though was a he wasn't eligible to bring a carbon yet, but it's as if he brought it. In other words, what we're doing is we're saying that the obligation to bring a carbon comes on him at a time when you're not able to bring the carbon, which is at night. And now we're saying, oh, because you were obligated to bring the carbon already, 
And now you became tummy again, so now you have a new obligation. Now, what we're doing now is we're asking that what did Rabbi Yechanan say before if someone was a chiger on the first day? We say that he's exempt. But maybe we should view it like this. Maybe we should say that even though for technical reasons he can't bring the carbon because he's, because he's a chiger, he's lame, but maybe the obligation is still there. And on the second day, he can still make it up. Just like by night, we say the obligation of the sacrifice already began. We should say the same thing for the lame person that the obligation for the sacrifice is there, at least enough that he should be able to do a tashlumen on the day, on the day later. You follow this, uh, this sort of logic? We're saying that even if someone that's exempt, it's only a technical reason why he's exempt, but he's really still obligated. That's, that's the concept there. Um, Amr um, Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yirmiya says, he gives us an answer, Shani Pesach Sheni. He says, it's not a good comparison. You're comparing Tuma to, you're comparing Tuma to, to someone that's exempt because he's lame. He says, it's not a good comparison. Tuma a carbon that can't be brought because he's tame is not a real um, uh, exemption. Oh, now he's totally exempt. No, many there are uh, there are times when someone that's tame still has the original obligation to bring the carbon, even though he's tame. Even though he's tame. Why do we, how do we see that? Because someone that was tame on the first Pesach. He has to make it up on Pesach Sheni. And we don't say that he was exempt. So you see what's going on over here? The being tummy does not exempt you from bringing the, not bringing the sacrifice. It's just a technical thing. So he says, but that's totally different than someone that's exempt because of Chiger. Someone that's exempt because he's lame yeah, is yeah. totally exempt. He has zero obligation. And so therefore, if he's lame on the first day, on the second day, he still doesn't have to bring it. Mm -hmm. We're answering Rabbi Yechim because we had a question, because by Nazar, it seemed that, that he was already obligated to bring the sacrifice, even though it was, it was before the time of the Karban. We're answering that that was, had to do with Tumma, and over right. there, it doesn't, um, doesn't mean that he's totally exempt. Yeah. Is it any different because in Pesach Sheni, they asked to be able to bring the yeah. Karban? It wasn't, it wasn't originally a, an obligation if they were wayward or on the road and whatever else, right. they, they requested it. Right. I don't know if that has to do with it. it has to do with something. There's, there's another aspect over here that Gemara is going to get into, but that's, that's just the background, the history of how Pesach Sheni started is that the people asked. But the question really is, how does Tuma work? Yeah. How does impurity work? So they were, they were um, Tuma, therefore they can bring carbon Pesach Sheni. If they didn't come bring Pesach Rishain, the right. first one, so they make it up on Pesach Shein. Mm -hmm. So we're saying that that's a makeup, even though they were exempt, but they still make it up. <clears throat> Maskafla Rapapa, Rapapa has a question on this, on this terrace. Pani Chalamandam or Pesach Shein, Tashlam and If you want to say that Pesach Shein is a makeup for the first one, then I get what you're saying. That means that when it comes to Tuma, the person is really obligated. And he has that obligation. The same thing would apply to a Nazar. He's already obligated at night to bring it. But if you say that it's not a makeup, Pesach Sheni is another separate, independent Yom Tif. So then, Mayakala Meymar. It's not a makeup. It's not a Tashlumen. You don't have a Teretz to the question on Rabbi Yechanan. Elam Rav Papa. Rav Papa gives another Teretz. We're going to go back to the discussion by Nazir. He said that if he becomes tummy by night, even though he was tummy once before and he didn't bring his sacrifice yet, he has to bring a second set, two sacrifices. Even though it was by night and he can't bring the sacrifice because it's at night. So, um, Rabbi Yechanan's opinion is, this is what Rabbi Papa is saying, is actually he could bring the sacrifice. The only problem is the base of Mikdash is locked. 
but the time for bringing it is already there. It doesn't actually mean luck. It just means that it's not mechuser. It's not that the time is not good. It's just technical reasons you can't, you don't bring it yet. But really, it's already the day of bringing it. And once the day of bringing the sacrifice starts, then if he becomes tummy again, he has to bring a second sacrifice. No, it means that he came in contact with a corpse or something. Yeah. So, yeah, but that wouldn't affect a, a nozzle. It was a Valkyrie also. Uh, no, 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 it's only Thomas Mace. Yeah. Because someone that's with his wife is a, is a Valkyrie. But, um, didn't Ezra then, say it was or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we just that, just that you go to the, no, you go to the mikvah there. if you follow oh. the kind of Yeah, so that was a discussion in Brachas. Uh, Did you do that in Brachas? Uh, right now, it's just yeah. so it's somebody's... in Brachas. I reviewed the Ben Besera. I forget where it's a whole uh, few pages in Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we're referring to, right? <clears throat> now the Gemara challenges this. Where Rabbi Yechanan holds that by night, it's not really Mechusrzman. Uh, Mechusrzman means that you didn't reach the time yet. It's by night you've already reached the time to bring the sacrifice. There's just a technical reason that you can't bring it. Whatever happens to be the, the base of Mikdash isn't accepting sacrifices right now. But the time on you is already began. Yeah. It's one thing when all the mitzvahs were given. Because it was introduced later. Yeah, Yosef mentioned that. Um, that maybe because they asked, because maybe because they asked and it came later, maybe that has to do with the two opinions. Is it considered a tashlumen for the first one? And the other opinion says it's not a tashlumen for the first one. It's its own thing. Maybe that's the other opinion. Gemara <laughs> says, Does Rabbi Yechanan really say this? Maybe he brings a carbon. Okay. Similar story, except this has to do with the Zav. Someone that was tummy once. He's tummy because of a type of uh, uh, mission that makes him tummy if he sees three times. It's called a Zav. Um, it's like Saras. No? Yeah, but it's um, so that's much worse. This, he just goes to a Mayan and he counts seven days and he brings a sacrifice. Um, so what happens is like this. Let's say he saw three times his tummy has to bring a carbon. If he sees twice his tummy also, but he doesn't bring a sacrifice. If he sees three times his tummy has to bring a sacrifice. So, so, um, Let's say the night before the sacrifice, he sees again. Yeah. What is the, the Mendy and the Golem uh, joke? If, uh, if it wasn't for bad luck, he wouldn't have any luck. <laughs> yeah. So what happens now? He sees again by night. Um, and then he sees twice by day. So you need three of them to require a new carbon. So we say, the, the way it works is like this. It says, Rabbi, Rabbi Yechanan says, if you see once by night and, and twice by day, maybe. That's a, considered a new seeing, and he has to bring another carbon. Maybe, maybe he has to bring a new carbon. But let's say by night, if we're talking about the night after the seventh day. Let's say by night, he saw twice. And then, and then he sees one by day, he doesn't have to bring a carbon. Because we say that those two are combined with the old one, with the old seeing, 
and it's just the same carbon that he has that he's going to bring for the old one. He's just going to count another uh, seven days, and it's going to be that's three times but, in one day, though, because the night's the yeah. Actually, it turns out that uh, by Azov, it could be three times in one day as well. Yeah. By Azov, it needs to be on three different days. By Azov, it could be three times in the same day. Now, and if Rabbi Yechonon holds that night is not considered missing the time, lacking time. In other words, night is considered the following day, which is the time for the sacrifice already. So what's the difference if it's two by night? The time of the obligation of the earlier sacrifice has already come. I know we can't bring it yet because it's at night. But now that he sees again twice, and then he sees a third time, by day, that should be that should require a new sacrifice. There's one detail here that I'm leaving out. What's the difference between if he sees twice by night and once by day, or once by night and twice by day? What's the difference between those? The answer is that the first ria of Azov is not considered really Azov. The first ria of Azov is considered a Balkari. It's a much lighter tama. After he sees another two times, those times they grab that ria over to their to their side and they make it much more serious. Okay, so if that's the case, so what's really happening here is that the difference is if you see once by night, so that's not a zav anyway. So, but when you see twice by day, that's the critical time, which is by day and it's two, so it drags the first one over. But if you see twice by night, you only have one by day. So you don't really have two of them that are after the time that was allowed to bring the sacrifice. If you hold that the night is not the time for the sacrifice. And that's what we're seeing, that the night is not the time for the sacrifice, which contradicts what Rabbi Papa said Rabbi, Rabbi Yechanan holds. Rabbi Yechanan holds that the night is the time for the sacrifice, that he proves from the Nazar story. So that's our question. The Gemara says, Ki Rabbi Yechanan Yechanan Okay, you know how we'll answer this up? We'll say, that Rabbi Yechanan was following the other opinion that he doesn't hold like. It. If he's following that opinion, then it's all obvious. What do you have to tell me? The Gemara says, no, actually. There is a chiddush here. Two by night and one by day is necessary. The Gemara quotes... Uh, the Gemara here is quoting the Gemara over there in, in um, Psachim, or is it in Psachim? Without even telling us what they say at all. Just quotes. Over there, there was a question from Rabbi Shisha Breda Ravidi, and Rabbi Yisif answered it. And the question was that what's the difference between one by night or two by night? And Rabbi Yisif answered the way that I explained it to you, that the one by night is not really as of anyway. So what he's saying, what Rabbi Yechonen is really saying, even according to the opinion that holds that the night is not the time to bring the sacrifice, which is not Rabbi Yechonen's opinion, but because the one Riyah that he had by night is not really a Zav anyway, so that gets dragged over to the two by day, which is the time to bring the sacrifice, and this person has to bring two sacrifices. All right. If the holiday passed and he did not bring his Chagiga sacrifice, he's not responsible anymore. And for, regarding this, it says that this is something crooked that can't be straightened. This is something lacking that cannot be counted. Amalei bar Hehe lehillel. Name was Hehe. Taisvus over here mentions that, yeah. Taisvus mentions over here that he was a convert and he was Ben Avram and Sarah. So therefore, there's an extra hey in their name, because Avram got a hey, and Sarah got a hey. So he's Ben Hey Hey. Yeah, and Taisus mentions over here that Ben Bag Bag is the same, because Bag, Bez and Gimel is the Gematria Hey. I'm sorry. Oh, Taisus doesn't say that. Taisus says Bag Bag is it. It's the Gematria of Hey. Bez and Gimel is Hey. Two and three is five. Sounds good. I'll, I'll go for it. So Ben Heye asks uh, Hillel the following question. Highly manais, when you say this is something lacking that can't be counted, it's a little problematic, that, that expression. It should be something lacking that's not able to be filled or refilled, 
replaced. It should have said something lacking that can't be replaced, not something lacking that can't be counted. Actually, we use the word counting because that's a specific scenario here where someone loses an opportunity to join others in a mitzvah. Is something lacking? He missed the opportunity to be counted together with others. Not, we're not saying we're talking about being replaced or filled. It's a specific scenario that people are doing a mitzvah and he didn't join in. Tanya nami hachi, we have another brisa. Move us liyachaliskin. Something that's crooked that can't be straightened. Zesha bittel kriyashma shal shachris a kriyashma shal arvis. Talking about someone that neglects reciting the shema in the morning or evening. Zesha bittel tefil shal shachris tefil shal arvis. So he misses the shema nesri in the morning or evening. He can't make it up. This is a problem because we know that you can make it up. And the next tefillah, you can say an extra Shman Asri. It must mean that you missed that as well, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Tesis mentions this. Yeah, okay. Uh, is something lacking that can't be counting. His friends were counted in to do a mitzvah and he didn't join in with that. FOMO. Yeah. He did not have FOMO. So Barhei says to Hillel, What's the meaning of the Pasuk that you will um, return and see the difference between a righteous person and a wicked person, and someone that serves Hashem to someone that doesn't serve Hashem. And remember where this is in Tanya? Remember what chapter? I remember. <laughs> okay. The Gemara asks, It's repetitive. It says the difference between a tzaddik and a rasha, someone that serves God and someone that doesn't serve God, it's the same thing. A tzaddik serves God, and the and the someone that in the wicked doesn't serve God. I know Russia, I know Layavadi. The Russia is someone that doesn't serve God. Amalei, so he responds, he'll respond to Barheye. He says, no, we're talking about two tzaddikim. Even though it says he doesn't serve God, he's still a tzaddik. You can't compare someone that studies his chapter a hundred times to someone that studies his chapter 101 times. He studies an extra time is considered that he serves Hashem. The other person, he didn't learn it one more time. You say uh, like, okay, that's it. You don't serve God because you only learned it uh, that amount. He says, yeah. What, what's going on by the taxis? Says Asara Parsi by the um, the donkey drivers when they want to go ten parsa it costs us chadasri parsa if you want them to go one more parsa one more um, measurement so betrays us he doubles the price so you see that that one little bit out of the routine is is the big deal amalei eliola bar hey hey the amalei rabbeloza. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Some say he said it. Elio tells Bar, hey, hey, maybe it's... How do you have it over there? The Amri Lei, the Rebbe Lazar. And those that, and there are those that say that Elio said it to Rebbe Lazar. My Dixiv, <clears throat> what's the meaning of the Pasuk? I have refined you. Not with silver. I have chosen you in a um, smelting pot of poverty. God was looking for all the fine character traits to give to the Jewish people. The best one he found was poverty. Shmuel says, and some say, Rabbi Yosef, poverty is so beautiful for the Jewish people. It's like a red strap on a white horse. I guess a red strap means it's something that's not dec decorative, but it brings out the whiteness of the horse of the horse because the contrast so too the poverty brings out the the um the good qualities of the jewish of the jewish people um it probably doesn't mean where a person doesn't have food it probably just means that he's not wealthy that's how i'd like to uh to explain this is the reverse true then that wealth is not good 
you know, the wealth brings out the worst in people. Uh, I think it says that somewhere. Some of them. <laughs> no? Oh, he doesn't Daily want bread. poverty or wealth. Daily bread. Daily bread. Uh-huh. Rav Shimon ben Manasseh, Ayim Ereizim, 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 says, what is some, someone that's crooked that can't be fixed? This is someone that lives with a woman that he's not allowed to be with, and he gives birth to a mamzer. Hailed in, lay hailed lay. Well, why is it that it can't be fixed? That's because he had a child. Vahatanya, the problem is, Reb Shimon ben Manasseh, Aimer, Reb Shimon ben Manasseh says, Goyne vadam, person steals. Efshah shiach se gnev v'yisakim. He's able to return the stolen object, and it's all fixed. Goyzel adam, if a person robs, after she asks the a second, he's able to return and it's fixed. But if someone lives with a married woman, she becomes forbidden to her husband. He's like banished from the world, and he goes. Is this also so even if even without a child, that's the question. If you have a child from a Goya, is that also? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, there's a, a Chabad story about it. Rav Shem Ben Yechai Yomer, Rav Shem says, Ein Bakri Bakri says, no one says, uh-huh. maybe, maybe that's the shot. Um, uh, Rav Shem Ben Yechai says, no one says, let's examine the camel, let's examine the pig. They say, let's examine the sheep because that's the only one that could be brought for a sacrifice. This is talking about like Rav Shem, we learned from Rav Shem before, that first he has to be straight before he could become crooked. And that is someone that studies Torah. Rabbi Yehuda ben Lakish, I call Talmud Chacham Shapir Shemina Torah. Rabbi Yehuda ben Lakish says, any Talmud Chacham that, uh, that goes away from Torah, Allah v'kas v'aymer k'tzipr neidedes min kina, like a bird goes away from its nest, so a person goes away from his place. What did your fathers find with me that was not good, that they distanced themselves from me? Question is, why does he have to have children for it to be not fixable? The Gemara says, like Kasha. Depends. If he lives with his sister, so then only if he has a child is it irreversible. But if he lived with a married woman, then it's ir- irreversible because she can't be together with her husband anymore. Viba Yisema, another teretz. Hava Habe Shazish, could it actually be with a married woman? Both examples. Blake Kasha, Kambainas Kambaratan, it depends if it was rape or if it was willingly. If she was, if she consented, so then she's forbidden to her husband. But if she didn't consent, so then she's still permitted to her husband. So it would only be a problem if she had a child. Viba Yisema, Hava Bainas, both of them is rape. Blake Kasha, Kambaishas Kayan, Kambaishas Yisrael. It's the difference is if it's a Kayan or if it's a, the wife of a Kayan or the wife of a Yisrael. The, the rule is that if a Kayan uh, lives with another woman, even if it was without consent, if a Kayan's wife lives with a man, even with, if she did not have consent, she's still forbidden to go back to her husband. Well, to those that go and come, there's no peace. If a person goes down in his learning, he's originally learning halacha, and then he goes, he's just learning Tanakh. So then he doesn't have peace. Shmuel says, this is someone that was learning Gemara, but he decides he's going to learn Mishnaya. Gemara is a higher level. Rabbi Yechanan says, even if he was learning Talmud Yerushalmi, but he decides he's going to go down a level to learn Talmud Bavli, oh, yeah, yeah. he's not going to have peace. Okay. Yeah, uh, Rabbi Yechanan's view of the Talmud Yushalmi, that's a higher level. <laughs> and the Bavli is, we're walking in the dark. Oh. Okay, have a good Shabbos, everyone. Woo!